here's an interesting thing, and maybe something you haven't thought of before, is that you have performance moments every single day. For a footballer, once a week. For you, every single day, as leaders of your organization or within your organization, you have performance moments every single day. Day. Let's think about those performance moments now. Those performance moments might be in a meeting where you have to build rapport, where you have to listen. And the way I do that is I look at the detail. So the first tip today is look at the small things that you can do within your communication, your listening, your rapport building, in your meetings, when you meet colleagues. What can you do to be a better leader? What tiny, tiny things? You know, at the moment in British sport, we have this guy here. This guy, you've probably not heard of him over here. His name is Dave Brailsford, or to be more accurate now, he's called Sir Dave Brailsford. He's been knighted by the Queen for the successes he's brought to British sport. In 1992, in the Barcelona Olympics, our cycling team in Britain won one gold medal. He took over the cycling team, British Cycling, in 1998. In 2008, we won eight gold medals. In 2012 in London, we won eight gold medals. In the, the Olympics that's just gone, every single rider won a medal. In Britain, very rare as it is for us in sport, we are dominating track cycling. Now, Dave Brailsford, puts the success down to what he calls, and I'm going to give you a slightly complicated English term, term here, he calls it the aggregation of marginal gains. By that he means we look at the small details, we win gold medals, we're the best in the world at what we do because we look at the tiny things. What we wear, the thickness of our tires, the shape of our helmets, we create aerodynamic bikes better than anybody in the world, and that those small things add up that helps us to win. Never ever underestimate how small changes in your behavior, in your thoughts, in your actions can add up. But that starts with you accepting, these are my performance moments, this is what I'm great at, but these are what I need to be better at. How can you be a psychologist working in football? Football is such a quick, instinctive sport. There's no time to think. How can anybody think? That is a misunderstanding of the way the brain is structured and how it functions. You've got to be able to manage your brain going into every performance moment, especially during negotiations and, and tough situations. Let me give you... Let me give you a little bit of psychological advice um, on that. Because every single day, in, in a lot of performance moments, you're going to have some tough times. You're going to have a question that's fielded at you that is going to make you think. You're going to walk into work one day, and you're going to be placed under pressure. What we know in psychology what we know in psychology is that to be able to deal with cognitive tunneling, to be able to deal with that kind of brain and to open up our mind a bit more, we have to engage in something called mental contrasting. Mental contrasting. Let me introduce you to this woman here. This woman here is a German lady called Gabriel Atongen. It's the woman who came up with this term mental contrasting. What mental contrasting is, is she says that the most successful people are often successful in their performance moments because before they go into their performance moments, they strategize in their mind exactly what they'll do if it goes wrong. They'll strategize in their mind the kind of questions that may be asked of themselves. They'll strategize in their mind solutions to the kind of challenges they'll face on a day-to-day -day basis. When you're driving into work or you're taking a train into work and you're sitting there, 
Do you read a book or do you chill out and listen to some music or do you think about the day ahead and start getting a picture of what that day looks like and do you think about some of the obstacles that might happen in a meeting that you've got that day or in an interaction that, you, that, that might be taking place? Mental contrasting, thinking negatively about the day ahead, thinking there's going to be some tough things. There's going to be some difficult conversations. There's going to be times when I might get distracted from this project. There might be some brain overload and a timeline that I've got to deal with. How am I going to deal with that? What am I going to do? Just picturing that in your mind and coming up with a solution before you go out to work can be very, very effective. When I work with footballers, the most powerful question I ask the footballer is, what are you going to do if it goes wrong on Saturday? What, if you, what are you going to do if you're a defender and you're playing against a big, tall, strong striker and he's getting the better of you and he's scored a goal? How are you going to deal with that? In that way, a footballer strategizes in his mind. Well, I'm going to keep great body language. I'm going to stay positive. I'm going to, I'm going to use my movement and my strength to outmuscle him strategizing about the negatives before they happen, mental contrasting, can help you be more effective during the day and can help you give cognitive tunneling. In fact, can I just, have we got a couple of minutes? Tony, can I bring you up here? Thank you so much, sir. Would you like to come up onto the stage? Okay, have you seen the film Superman before? Yeah, yes. yes. Would, you, would you show me a Superman pose? So that's hands on your hips, feet nice and wide. And, 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 oh, yep, yeah, you've got to take that off and, and, and show, show those pecs. Now, stay there for me, don't move. Stay in Superman. Tony is he's increasing his levels of testosterone. <laughs> okay. You feeling pretty powerful right now? My English is uh, the kid to enter. <laughs> he's feeling powerful. Tony is, stay there for me, Tony is reducing his levels of cortisol. Cortisol is your stress hormone. You feeling relaxed? Yep. Excellent. He's feeling relaxed right now. What she's found is that when, when participants hold this pose and they go into a presentation, an interview, they score better on ratings after holding this Superman pose for two minutes. Thank you very much, Tony. Okay. Thank you. A round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> so to finish off, what I'm saying here is clearly what I'm not asking you to do is to go into a performance situation and just say to your colleagues, I'm just going to hold my Superman pose here whilst I speak to you. Although you could do it beforehand. I was doing my Superman pose before I came on the stage, right? But there's good scientific evidence to back up what we were doing here. I say to you, the last thing to say to you tonight is use your body language. And that's just not aggressive monster. That's not for everybody and for every situation. I'm not saying that. It might be calm and composed. And there's a great couple of words to go into a performance situation. Have a game face. Have a game face. Here are my four tips for you. Profile the next level. Be passionate about improving your performance moments. Know your performance brain. Mentally contrast. Think about your day ahead. What obstacles are you going to face? Strategize in your mind how you're going to deal with that. Use your body language. Your, as much as your psychology drives your physiology, so your physiology drives your psychology. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen. <laughs>